so um, happy one year anniversary. Yeah, it's been a good year. It's been a great year. <laughs> so for those uh, those watching now or those who will, who will be watching later, um, just uh, let everybody know what are you celebrating the one year anniversary of? Um, being a member of Fire King Whiskey for the for the main part. Um, it's been a huge life changing experience for me. Um, I've been able to inspire a few people along the way, which has kind of been an added bonus for it. So. Yeah. And we'll get into the details of that in a minute here. Um, so I asked you to kind of jump on and do a, a quick little interview with me because we do love to kind of follow up um, kind of a where are they now kind of thing um, for people who've done fire team whiskey long term. So um, you were definitely one of um, the people who have hit that that um, that goal. And um, so just checking in with you for a lot of things. But first, let's just start at the beginning. And um, can you just uh, tell us a quick story about um, what made you decide to join Fireteam Whiskey? What was going on in your life at that time um, that kind of led to you making that decision? Um, well, part of it was I was overweight. You know, I can say that now looking back at it. I hit it pretty well. I didn't even realize I was overweight. Um, it wasn't a lot, but it was enough to make me constantly feel tired, uh, miserable. Uh, my dad had some health issues, and I decided that I wasn't going to go down that road, that I wasn't going to be – I didn't want my kids to be mad and upset at me for not taking care of myself. And the only person that has ultimate contr control of what I do is me. So either sit there and bitch about it or do something about it, and I chose to do something about it. Okay. And so, you know, but there's a lot of options out there, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they just join a gym or they go to one of those hormone doctors and start getting shots and lose some weight or go on a crash diet and calorie cut or, you know, all those kind of things that we, we know as, as consumers of the fitness and health world, we have a lot of choices out there. So what kind of, um, you know, drew you to Fireteam Whiskey and trying our program? Um, multiple, multiple things that aligned right with what I was looking for. Um, I was seeing results from, uh, from a member, from a trainer, um, somebody I knew, trusted. Um, I knew that he wouldn't, that he wouldn't bullshit me. So I started asking him questions. Um, I live out in the middle of nowhere. Town population, I shit you not, is 174 people. There is <laughs> nothing in this town for exercise equipment, gyms, training facilities, nothing. It's pavement and whatever else I came up with. So being able to do a workout in my living room was another huge bonus for me that I can do it when I get up in the morning, I could do it whenever I needed to. My routine when I would come home was sit down in my chair for 45 minutes. Uh, right there. Let's eliminate that excuse. I got 45 minutes that I'm wasting. I can put a workout in. And that's most of my time that I would be able to do that as I get home and just instead of sitting down and resting and, oh, man, I'm so tired. It's like, okay, I got to get this done and get hammered on it. So that was my primary workout time was between four between four and five is my primary time that I do it. So it fit into my schedule. It fit into my lifestyle. Um, it fit into everything that I was looking for for a program. And to top it off, there was accountability. Somebody call out your bullshit. Hey, you're not doing it. Why? You're making up excuses. You're not going to progress. If you don't do this, nobody's going to do it for you. So what can we do to help you get to that point? So I had a great camaraderie to begin with, and has really, it's really kind of motivated me to get to where I'm at today. Yeah, awesome. So, so in summary, it was, you know, obviously you had a limited amount of time. You had a limited time window that you're working with in, in your day, daily life where you could work out. B, you didn't have the facilities or equipment to actually go to a traditional gym, right? And then, see, you were looking for the accountability to, to keep you 
um, you know, on track and, and just mm-hmm. kind of give you the support that you need to get you going until you can motivate yourself. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's what kind of appealed to you about the program. You knew these are the things that you needed. So you started and I remember way back when, um, you did the 22 cal. I can't remember. You did the, you did 90 days in a row, right? Did you sign up initially for 90 days? Um, no, the 90 day program wasn't ready yet. We were, you guys were still working on the 50 and the, um, the the 38 and the 50 when I started. So the 22 was done and you guys were building the other ones as we went. So it was probably stretched out for four to five months by the time I got done with the 50 cal. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So you initially did the 30 days. So kind of, I don't know if you can maybe remember, you probably can. Um, Just kind of recall back of, you know, your first couple of weeks of doing the 22 cal program and, and um, you know, what, what were, what were your struggles? What were the things that kind of kept you going? Um, Staying focused was probably one of my struggles. Uh, I still recognized that I was making up excuses of and delaying it a little bit. And then it was about the two week mark that there was a switch that clicked. Um, We were getting ready to go do something or we had some plans or something. And I told my wife, I said, no, I've got to work out today. I have to get it done today. And I think that that was the switch that it took for me to continue doing it. Um, The struggle that I had to begin with, just being able to go through one of the first episodes or first couple sessions without dying. Um, (laughs) The, and then going back after after I completed the program and being able to do the program again, just to see the huge improvement on day 31 in comparison to day one. I mean, just the I, I was I was tired. I wasn't fatigued, if that makes sense. Like I, the first couple of weeks, I was just shot at the end of it. It's like now it's OK, bring it on. I can do two of these in a row. Let's keep going. Yeah. So you saw um, a change really quickly in your fitness level compared, you know, day one or week one to, you know, day 30. And that's why high intensity interval workouts are so effective because, A, they don't, you know, take a lot of time. You're not in a gym for an hour or two hours working out. And then B, it's so much more efficient with getting your fitness level up to a, a certain level. So you get get to a point where you can actually go longer um, because you get fitter quicker. So you saw the benefit of that in just 30 days with doing our program. And I love that you said that you, you made the choice around week two. All of a sudden, kind of, it was a mindset sh- shift for you. It was making it a priority. All of a sudden... Mm-hmm this became a priority to you when it hadn't been before. And, you know, it it could have been maybe you were starting to feel a little fitter, starting to feel a little bit better because of the nutrition plan or, you know, maybe seeing a little bit of results and that kind of, you know, got you motivated to make it a priority. But I think that is the number one struggle for everybody, especially people like you and, and like Gina, who, you know, have a million kids. <laughs> I joke, but he does have a lot of kids. He's, how many have? Five? Four. Four. Okay, you have four. So he has four kids, which is still a lot. Um, you know, full time job. Gina works shifts, his wife. So, you know, you have a really, really busy, and your kids are really young. I mean, it's not like they're teenagers are kind of out doing their thing. Like, you've got like babies and toddlers running around. So, um, this is the same thing that everybody runs into. You know, we have busy lives and we have so many other things. Obviously your kids are a priority to you. Obviously your wife is a priority to you. Obviously your job is a priority to you, right? So where can you cut it out? And you had identified that 45 minutes that you had that you were kind of sitting on your butt doing nothing most days. And you just inserted that healthy, you know, activity into that part. But the mindset shift for you is finally you made it a priority 
and that's mm-hmm. that was a game changer for you. And now, a year later, right. boom, you're still doing. It. And that's the difference. You know, people who make those one year um, resolutions in January, and then two weeks again, you can't seem to get to the next January and keep that momentum going. Gotta add Jim back. <laughs> I love technology. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just talking about how most people struggle, and I'm sure you have in the past, and so so did I, um, where, like, you, you make those New Year's resolutions in right, January, and, you know, a year later, in January of that next year, you're pretty much where you started, right? Most people cannot get the momentum going to be fitter and healthier and meeting their goals a, a year later like you have achieved, you know, so... That's huge. I mean, props to you and, and, and congratulations to you for doing what most people can't because 90% of people who make New Year's resolutions, so you didn't start in New Year's, but it's still, we're looking at you a year later and you right. made it and you probably exceeded probably where you thought you would be. Yeah, I've, I've actually invested in weight training equipment. I've made a lot of financial investments into my health, into my kids' health, into my wife's health even. Um, So in one of the things, I think that switch that we talked about a few minutes ago was kind of, if I improve myself, then I'm improving as a father, I'm improving as a husband, I'm improving as an employee, I'm improving as a person, just because of the mental fitness that goes along with it, being able to accomplish this stuff, that it improves me, I think it improved me more mentally than it has the physical and, and the physical changes that it's done is, is it's, it's trained me to become a better person and better spouse for my wife. So there was another benefit of, of all of this as well. I love that. I love that you say that and that you focus on that too, because it's not just how you look in a bathing suit, right? It's not just, you know, yeah, it's nice to have muscle definition and you, you know, you kind of feel proud when you see that. But it is about, you know, how you feel in here, you know, how you feel emotionally, how you feel mentally, you know, that you're not irritated and tired every single day. And then, you know, in turn, you're moody and you kind of snap at your spouse and you snap at your kids and, you know, you're kind of irritable at work. And, you know, all of these things kind of culminate, like you said, when you're taking care of your health and your fitness you're taking care of that internal person so you you the true you can shine through and that you know we all know that when you're when you're tired and you're irritable and you're stressed and you're not sleeping well and you're always you know fatigued and you can you can barely go up the stairs without just you know getting winded and you can't keep up with your kids um, you know that wears on you mentally and you you're not you know being being the person that you want to be to the people around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I inspired one of my colleagues to lose 60 pounds. He didn't do the fire team, but he noticed that there was changes that I was doing. So he's lost 60 pounds, which was a huge number for him. And he's back into getting shape. And he had, uh, was the lead on getting a softball team um, for, for work. So that was pretty, I was kind of glad to see some, rubbing on <laughs> yeah and that's another benefit of this of taking care of yourself and actually you know a lot of people feel like taking care of your fitness and taking care of your health and taking the time to work out and things like that um, can feel selfish but you know the argument is yeah you are taking care of yourself it is kind of selfish but then again you are improving your relationships with your kids, your wife, your coworkers, and you're inspiring other people to take care of themselves. And like you said, you inspired somebody to lose 60 pounds. Who knows where, if that guy would have ever been inspired to do that. You know, we, we have to assume that he wouldn't have, right? So if you would not have made the choice to do what you did for yourself, then he would have never been inspired to do that too. So I love that butterfly effect 
of this kind of stuff is because you have no idea who's watching you and who is inspired by you and just seeing you and the changes in you, it may save their life. And that, that always gives me chills. Like I got like goosebumps just like when I said that, cause I, I mean, it is, it literally is. And we don't emphasize that enough is that you have possibly inspired somebody to live longer you know, to make the changes to live longer so they don't die of, a, you know, an early death of a heart attack or a stroke or, you know, uh, chronic health issues, that you you were the catalyst for that. Yep. Um, there's another one of my colleagues that's overweight, and the doctor had actually put him and his wife on a keto diet. And at first, he's like, he was really apprehensive and skeptic and it was a diet and diets don't work and I'm just fine and then he then I showed him my before and after pictures and stuff and this he started doing this maybe two months ago so we've been able to share recipes I've been able to kind of coach him and be like you know I understand sometimes you're going to fall off of the wagon just pick yourself back up start another day you know every day is a fresh start so just don't don't get defeated because of one mis mistake. Pick yourself back up and enjoy whatever it was. If you want that pizza, enjoy that pizza and start over tomorrow. It's a new day. Yeah, and that's so important. And, and you obviously are a testament to this because you've gotten to a year, right? And most people don't. And I think that is the biggest struggle that people have is when they do fall off the wagon, um, when they, you know, don't prior plan or they make other things a priority or whatever the reasons are, when you get off plan, they just kind of throw in the towel and they lose all that momentum that, that they had going and it just stops in its tracks. And I always think of it as, you know, you're trying to push a boulder up a hill, you know, and we're looking at the hill. We're not going to get there tomorrow, you know, but what is required is for you to move it inch by inch consistently and not just you know a, a lot of effort right up front and then burn yourself out and let go of the boulder and then what and then it rolls right back downhill and you're back where you started so that's what most people do with their health and fitness uh, progress and they don't make it to one year down the road like you did so what what are some kind of you know, the top 10 or, you know, like the top things that tips and tricks that you would give to somebody. So they're watching you right now. Maybe they've fallen off the wagon, you know, and they're ready to start again, or they need some motivation to start again. What are some tips that you can give somebody watching right now who's starting at day one and wants to be where you're at one year from now? Um, what are some lessons learned that you've had that you can kind of give to people watching? Um, probably the biggest, most helpful tip I could give is planning, whether that's planning a menu, whether that's planning your grocery shopping, planning, you're going out to eat, pre-plan what you're going to have at the restaurant, pick a certain restaurant that you know has food that's friendly, just, and it doesn't have to be an elaborate plan. Say, Hey, this week we're going to do carnivore. We're eating all meat products. Perfect. So it's meat and cheese. Oh, darn, I get to have bacon again for all my meals. I'm not disappointed. You know, bacon's an awesome. It's the duct tape of the kitchen. Um, and, then the, and then just staying committed by having some sort of a goal in place. Write it down. Where do you want to go? Um, again, you're going to come up with hurdles. How are you going to get around with those obstacles? What are you going to do? You know, we have three birthday parties in July that are literally for our girls are literally two weeks apart for most of our birthdays. So we've got a lot of cake and ice cream going on. So what are we going to do? Birthdays, we're going to enjoy the cake and ice cream. The next day we're going to buckle back down and we're going to get back on our plan and we're going to do, you know, I'm going to do what I call uh, um, a regret workout. You know, I regret eating that cake. I got a headache. How am I going to get rid of it? I'm going to go burn some calories I'm going to do a little extra workout. I'm going to do something a little bit more challenging than just a normal routine. And I'm going to record it. Um, and some other thing that's helped is just the records of your food, tracking food, tracking your workouts. If you have a bad week, what was it? 
Were you traveling? Mm -hmm. What were you eating? What foods were you eating? Did you not plan ahead to know what restaurants that you could go? Did you get a motel that was right next to uh, McDonald's and now you're eating McDonald's for a week? Uh, so the number yeah. one thing, biggest plan, or biggest help, tip, is plan. That would be the yeah. Thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree. It's it's all about planning, and um, I I do a lot of talks about this specific issue. Um, people who just try and use willpower as the the way they they want to achieve their health and fitness goals, and this is why people fail over and over and over again. Because when you're relying on willpower, you're not planning. So you're just, yep. you know, just like, well, hopefully, hopefully I'll have the willpower if something comes up and, and I'm hungry and I didn't bring anything with me to eat. And, um, and I catch people all the time. I know, you know who I'm talking about. If you're listening, you're watching <laughs> some fire team whiskey members who have called them out on this over and over and over again is like, Oh, okay. You have a trip, huh? For work, huh? Oh, what, what did you pack? Oh, nothing. Really? Haven't we talked about this? So you're just, you're going ahead and you're setting yourself up for failure. You're just hoping you'll stay on plan, but mm -hmm. we know that doesn't work. So mm -hmm. let's, let's take five minutes to plan. Um, so I agree a hundred percent. And that's why you've made it to a year because you've made planning a priority. And then it just becomes habit at that point. I mean, after a certain amount of time doing it, don't you just automatically do it now? I mean, it's just a no-brainer. Yeah. When you have a trip, you plan your food. When you're about to go out to eat, you check menus. You, you know, you're you just automatically get it's a part of your life at that point. Yeah. Um, depending on where I'm at, I actually like going to the grocery stores. We've got some pretty good grocery stores that have delis that have a huge salad bar. So depending on what what I'm in the mood for. Um, they've got, you know, uh, Hy-Vee's our local one. Um, they have small restaurants in there that have burgers. They have that stuff. And it's, you know, if, if I don't want any of that, I will go and actually buy, you know, a hamburger. And depending on where they are, some of these motels have got a grill outside for construction workers that they can go ahead and use and just grill outside, make it easy. But again, the whole planning part, if you're not prepared and you don't have something in place on how you're going to accomplish it, you're right. You're set up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that mindset shift that, that happened with you, Jim, is, you know, it, it became just a lifestyle. And that's why that's why I don't like to call any of, you know, the fire team whiskey eating plans are not diets, you know, because diet insinuates that you're going without diet insinuates that you have to, you know, sacrifice and you're going to be in pain and you're going to, you know, kind of be um, deprived in some way. So talk about that for you, the shift in your nutrition and how it's, it, it's not really a diet. It became a lifestyle. I think the easiest part for me was, the fact that I get to eat whatever meat I want. I love steak anyway, so that was probably that was probably the easiest part was, oh, I get bacon and eggs for breakfast. The nutrition part for me, that was the easy part. It's like, all right, I get to eat most of the stuff that I already like. Summertime, we have tons of, tons of the fresh veggies and stuff anyway, so that was... We just made minor changes to our lifestyle. We cut out the pasta. And that was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Um, we found substitutes. We like doing zucchini noodles. Um, kind of found out that zucchini is a very absorbing vegetable. Like it absorbs whatever flavor you want to throw at it. So if you want it to mm -hmm. taste like uh, pasta sauce, just make it in some pasta sauce. Um, the tough part to get over and still it's kind of a challenge is buns on hamburgers. Um, I've made it most of the time anymore. I've been able to just bypass it and be like, nope, I'll take it without. I'll take the grief wood. 
you don't want a hamburger bun? Like, uh, no, it's been giving me a headache every time I eat it. So I'm going to have to pass. So look at the kids as well. <laughs> the well, awesome. Part, so oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say the, the nutrition part, once that, again, I'm going to throw the plan. Once you have a plan in place, the nutrition's easy. Just follow the basic, what you know, on our on the the twenty two pound. The, the nutrition program is so easy that if you can't find anything that you don't like on there, then you are extremely picky. And I'm just going to leave that one alone and not go any. In, in depth. <laughs> But the nutrition on the 22 plan was so simple, and it was a good way to ease us into um, the 38, which was a little bit more strict. And then the 50, I think, was even more strict because um, mm-hmm. I don't remember which one had the fasting. Um, but it to, to be able to develop the skills that it takes to be like, oh, well, this is easy. This is good. This isn't good. We're going to leave this out. So the, the step that fire team has to get to that point, that was another huge benefit to stick with it because it's easy. And I'm a keep it simple, stupid person. If it's not simple, I'm not going to do it. Right, exactly. And why complicate it when it doesn't need to be complicated? And, you know, you made another point of tracking. So especially for long term like you, um, Sure. Up front, you know, you're going to you're going to get the weight loss. You're you're going to, you know, see some pretty dramatic results. But if you're looking to, you know, optimize your health and optimize your, you know, everything, basically your life in general, um, you know, continue to get fitter, to to continue to feel better, um, especially for those of you out there who, you know, maybe have chronic health issues and and you think you're going to have to kind of suffer with these for the rest of your life, um, you know, where Jim is at right now, you know, he's in optimization mode, which is a great mode to be in. Um, and it's important to kind of, you have a history, like you've been tracking this whole time. So you have so much data to go with. So you can kind of tweak little things of, you know, maybe you're, you're, um, feeding window for intermittent fasting or um, maybe doing on and off some kind of carb cycling or you know even cycling in some carnivore Um, so you are at such a a sweet spot because it's not about you know losing weight Um, it's about just feeling better and better and healthier and healthier and as time goes on which most people have the reverse thinking right I, I don't know how many people tell me that uh, they're like well you know I I've used to be able to do those things but then I got old and then I'm like oh how old are you and they're like oh 35 and I'm like <laughs> like seriously no that's not the answer I'm almost 40 years old and I'm fitter and healthier and have lower body fat than I've ever had in my entire life so you can reverse your aging process it's a mindset shift to believe that you actually can do that so Jim has you know he's taken it to the next level and he's he's in that optimization phase which is so amazing where you can just take it wherever you want so where do you want to take it now Jim what are you working on well right now um, I'm in what I'm calling maintenance mode because it's easier easier to maintain than it is to let it go and do it all over again because to get to this point I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say it was easy it was hard work um, lots of times I wanted to give up but I looked at where I wanted to be I I, I, I want to maintain um, I'm maintaining about 30 pounds down depending on the day it's either between 172 and 175 so it varies you know um, there's a couple of days, you know, the birthdays that came up, there was a few pounds that were out on top of that, but, you know, just buckle back down and refocus and redirect. Um, and then I want to, it, it sounds cliche, but I want to try to get my after high school wrestling body back. Uh, the wash bar, the washboard stomach, um, the chiseled look, I had that at one time, and 
being 41 now and in better shape now this year than a year ago today that it, it's not going to come over overnight. I've got to work at it continuously. Um, so I've been doing that, and then I've got some goals on certain lifts that I want to be able to hit 300, uh, 300 pounds on deadlift and squats and um, certain bench press weights. My goal is to increase my weight training to get to that point. So, um, young kids are like, yeah, you're old, and I'm going to kick your ass. Be like, okay, let's hit the weights. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. And, um, you know, yet another uh, thing. So on this journey, um, Jim was inspired to become a trainer. So he is actually now officially a certified personal trainer. So congratulations on that. That's huge. Yeah. So not only has this journey taken you from being overweight and unfit um, and headed down to maybe the path of chronic health issues to a year later, not only are you fit and healthy, but you're also now inspiring other people and training other people. So um, you were inspired to, to you know, help people with their journeys in that way. So congratulations on that. And just letting people know that um, Jim is one of our fire team whiskey trainers and his very first um, fitness video for us was so hardcore. <laughs> it was, amazing so i mean i i just can't wait to see um where you where this whole journey takes you with your with this new um, part of your life with being a certified personal trainer thank you i call that my pissed off workout because when i get pissed off i just want to just lift heavy things and not really punish myself but lack of better words punish myself to just that's, that's when I seem to do my best work is when I'm upset with something. So I can just, I can really drain it. And then at the end of it, all that anger is gone. It's like you get a clear set, clear mindset, and you can continue on with a clear mindset after you've just really pushed that out. But my whole work ethic, yeah. my whole life is I work hard. And so I, that was kind of my first one is I wanted a good, solid, hard workout that I can just push play and drain my brain and go do it. Yeah. Well, it definitely, it definitely was. So <laughs> we'll just call that one. I'll change the name on it. I'll put the Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> so any last words, any last comments for um, people watching? Um, all I can say is it's a journey. Uh, a lot of people didn't gain this weight overnight. Uh, it's a slow progress, and in order for it to go off healthy, it's it's going to take time. Just be patient. Don't give up. Um, if you're struggling, call a cadre. Call anybody. Hey, I need some. I need some pointers. I need some tip. I need some encouragement. I just have a whole plate full of brownies in front of me. I need somebody to come and get rid of them for me before I destroy them. Or you know, for me, I think it was peanut butter. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cups are, are uh, that's a crutch for me, um, especially if they're frozen. <laughs> so I may or may not have had some of those the other day. I'm not going to incriminate myself, but um, I've, I've been really focused on my nutrition and it's, it's tough. So there's people out there to help. You don't have to go through this battle alone. Everybody on this, on this team so far has always given some sort of encouragement you don't have to fight the fight alone. We've been there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's why it's so nice to have a coach, especially when you first start, um, to kind of be that kind of backbone for you um, until you, you build up the strength and, and, you know, ability to kind of correct yourself. You know, it takes a lot to be able to correct yourself when you're first starting out. And it is nice to have somebody to fall back on um, who's been there, who's, who's struggled like that, who's been through the program like you're just starting to do. So that is the one awesome thing about uh, the Fire Team Whiskey program is that you can have somebody like Jim to turn to, to text with and say, hey, man, you know, I'm struggling. I, I just could barely get through the, the day three 22 caliber workout, you know, it's and he can kind of 
talk to you about that because he's been there. He was on day three. He experienced the same thing you did. So it's not like just some, you know, that that's kind of the, the thing that I wanted to create about this program is it's not just somebody who's always been super fit, you know, and it's just been an, a trainer, you know, basically since they came out of the womb. And, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's nothing has really ever been hard for you. You know, it's, it's nice to have people who, who, you know, are training you, helping you get through this process, who have been there, done that, and have had those same struggles. And then you have your whole community of Fire Team Whiskey um, members who have done it too and have had their struggles and are, are willing to, to cheer you on and pep talk you and share those experiences and what worked for them as well to get them through. Absolutely. Let us know. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview with me on your one year anniversary with Fireteam Whiskey. And for those of you out there watching, go ahead and go to fireteamwhiskey.com and sign up for, I recommend the Start Your Journey program because that's 90 days. You get to have Jim working with you for 90 days straight to get you through that first hump until you're ready to kind of do it on your own and you'll have an entire team of members cheering you on and supporting you every single day of that 90-day program. So go to fireteamwhiskey.com and sign up for your Start Your Journey program, and then we'll sign you up with Jim and get you started. Thanks, Jim. You bet. Thank you. All right.